Knock, knock. Hi, Sheila. Come in, you're good looking. Stay out if you're not. Hi, Sheila. How are you? I'm fine, thanks. What have you been so, doing? So-so. So-so. <laughs> Man, let me take my goggles off. And I had to smile because um, one of them, one of the children went to ask me something and the, the chap that was supervising to me, I just said, shh. Well, I think I'd better let you all know who I am first. My name is Sheila Elizabeth Gillis and I come from Ireland. And I've been to lots of countries. I came out here on a two year working visit and I'm still on my working visit. The story I'm going to tell you was told me by my grandparents, my grandfather, when I was about, well, some of your ages, I'm not saying all of them. One time when we were being told the story when we were children, it was grandfather. Right. And the next time it was great uncle James. Well, one was a navy and one was army. I've been thinking about it and I think it must be about my great uncle for the simple reason that he was J.B. Holmes. They were both J.B. Right. But my grandfather was also always known by his Christian name, Joseph. But my uncle James was always known as J.B. I always thought it was a fairy tale because in Ireland we're famous for our fairy tales. We believe in the little people. So he used to tell me a story about when he was younger and he ran away because his older brothers were joining the army and he didn't want to be left at home. There were seven brothers of them and they all went to war. And um, six of them were in the Navy and one broke the... Um, and he went because he loved horses. So he joined the army too. He lied about his age. He was only 15, I believe, when he went in and he wanted to be a drummer boy. He was down in the south, he was visiting relatives in the south when he suddenly was told that his brothers were all, had all joined up when the war was declared. And they'd all joined up, so he went back to the north of Ireland and he went to the first recruiting. So he went home and he apparently put a suit of clothes on that belonged to an older brother and... Uh, altered his appearance, he, he made himself look older. He ended up by being a, a trooper. He was in the cavalry. Uh, his, the branch of the, of the army he was in was called the North Irish Horse. They landed in France. took place and I'm not quite certain whether it was in the September 
or the November. And the shell that landed near the, the in the it landed in the trenches. But apparently it was of such a type of ferocity that it stripped clothes off one lot and killed the other lot. And my grandfather, because I don't have I'm saying grandfather. Yeah. Because he was the youngest, was at the bottom, the, the others pretended to pile around him, if you know what I mean, because he shouldn't have been in the army. He was, he was only 16. When they, got, when they went to get the uniform, he had his trousers and he had his battle dress, but no buttons. And they didn't have zips on them in those days in the army. Everything was brass buttons. And it was coming up to Christmas and they were all going to wondering about were they going to have any Christmas lunch or Christmas dinner? Were they going to hear, have a mail from Christmas like we all do at Christmas time? We want to hear from home. And they could hear the Germans in their section of the trench sw uh, singing. So they used to have a competition of trying to sing who was the loudest and who was the best. Christmas morning dawned and they started singing. They were, si they were singing Christmas carols. And suddenly they realized that the Germans were singing Christmas carols. They were singing them in German and they were singing the same carol. So gradually one soldier after another climbed out of the trenches onto no man's land. And in the end, the two ranks of army literally stepped up out of the trenches into no man's land. And gradually the two groups came to meet in the middle of no man's land. They had food and the Germans had the wine and the beer. And they, the two lot got together and they literally had a Christmas party. In the middle of the First World War. And it lasted the whole day. So it was a happy mixture. They started talking about, well, like you would your home, your family, and what they did in Civvy Street. Uh, one of them was a bus driver, and somebody else was a blacksmith. The German soldiers were telling the British ones about their families at home, and Germany and the British Tommies were doing the same, and they were exchanging ideas. 
they all realized that really and truly, they were no different from one another. They were all the same. And then one German soldier noticed that my grandfather was very uncomfortable because he was hanging on to his clothes. You know, he's trying to eat and hang on to it, keep himself dressed because his trousers kept falling down. This German soldier asked what was wrong because he thought he was wounded. And he told him that he had no buttons on his uniform, didn't know what to do. So the Germans said, come with me, took him to a part of their trenches. and they had a whole lot of spent bullets. And they started pulling them apart. My grandfather said, he stood there, he said, I thought I was missing out on having a beer and something good to eat, but just watching him playing with bullets, he said, I didn't know what he was doing. And he melted the lead, they, they had a little, uh, I don't know, it must have been a, um, what do you call them, prime stove or something like that. And it turned out that he was making him a set of buttons for his uniform. Now the buttons were made from the bullets, the lead out of the bullets. And he made them six. He made them four for his trousers and he made them two for the jacket. My, my grandfather used to say that that was the first time he realized that the average German soldier didn't want the war any more than the British Tommies did. After the Christmas Day and the Boxing Day were finished, they went back to fighting one another. Because the officers were very annoyed that the men had got together and become friends. I've got them here. There's six of them. And if you feel them, they're a lot heavier than a normal button. And there's only two holes. Yeah. And they've been in this little purse ever since I was a little girl. But to me, they do mean something. I knew once I thought I'd lost them and I felt really, oh, things were, I felt as everything had gone wrong. And then suddenly they turned up. Don't ask me where they, where, who, how they got lost, I don't know. When I'd be down or 
things were going wrong and I couldn't get ready. I'd pull out grandfather's buttons and I'd sit and I'd play, make a different, like I'm doing now, make a different designs with them and thinking about things and ha happiness. Good, it was good memories. They always seem to have good memories, I don't know why. They're, they've meant a lot to me in my life. Um, I don't know. It's hard to ex it's hard to explain what they what they've really meant to me. I mean, there's no value to anybody. And there's no monetary value to them or anything like that. It's just just the whole family's linked up in them. My family. Mm. And wherever I went in the world, I had them with me. And although I might have been miles away from family, and here I am now, uh, with the, no family, but I've still got my family with me. Stille na, heilige na, all is calm, all is bright Round yon virgin mother and child Holy infants so tender and mild Sing, men! Sleep in heavenly peace